Solvers. Hello and welcome to the Nonprofit Network. My name is Shelby Stokes. Kelly Schimpel. And we are here for our weekly podcast where we talk about all things fundraising. We are fundraising enthusiasts. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And we had quite the weekend. Um, I had to call out sick. Oh, was so terrible. I was not happy about it. So but terrible. Turns out I had the flu. And you don't Super get the bad. flu very often. But Super bad flu. last week was my week. My Still kids sounds bad. Brought it home from school. Yes, I do. A little stuffed up. So we had to have somebody come in and help with my show. Which was not the best way to go about it, but we still did it anyway. And that's part of the beauty of the group. It is the beauty of the group. How many times do I have to say that, right? I know. I'm like, I still oh, have some sort of guilt it's the, it's the in group. that I had partners that were depending on me to be somewhere and I was not there. And that's like, that's, I have trouble with that. I have trouble with that. People, anyway, it's the ego. Story short. It's the ego, and I get it, and it's fine. And you need to have an ego to get in front of that mic. I get that. Trust I, me. I, I think everybody has an ego. Ego is not a bad word. Ego is a great word. Ego is not a bad word. Egomania. I'm here to tell you, ego is it's not, not a bad what you word. are. Ego is a good word. What I will say is that you had some planes, trains, and automobiles type oh, stuff. Oh, so Lord. they had a layover. It was delayed. So yes. Cut to second no, leg first, of trip. Our first. Leg was delayed. Was, okay, was yeah, delayed. correct. So we so missed, missed our your connection. second leg, yeah. which then found you on a Greyhound style bus in the middle of the night. It was what? not even. Yeah, no. Wow. I mean, I don't. I think it might not even been it was, that because was, I mean, my knees wait. were up like this. I was like, oh, it was a low bus. It was. It was not it a was very a big. Bus. But the seat was right here. And they didn't tilt, you know. And, so, I just, and I just have to imagine this is like the creme de la creme of humanity, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Especially at midnight, which is what time we took the bus. Midnight to 3 a.m. Okay, so, so I was trying to recount the there. story mm -hmm. earlier. You guys missed the 10 o'clock bus. Is that right? By 15 minutes. Okay, you did miss the 10 o'clock bus. Because people don't know how to get off an airplane. Bus. Okay, got it. So we get, yeah. I said that out loud and I was like, wait, they couldn't have missed. They, they definitely made the 10 o'clock. Nope. Yes. No, did not. No, wow. did not make okay. the 10 o'clock. Yeah, because our flight didn't take off until, oh, about two hours past. Oh, man. Yeah. Good for you. And we had about an Good hour connection kind of a situation, but well, that went away. But we did it. I'm proud of you. Thank you. did you. the things. And then you walked like a mile in freezing temperatures. Below freezing Now do you feel like you are a degrees. gladiator? Like you're yeah. a gladiator. You can do anything now. So then you now. get to your hotel room and you're supposed to go to sleep. No, no you just walked a mile where wind and our, my eyes were dripping with water. So I had mascara oh. running down my face and we get to the hotel and we get this guy that's helping us at the front desk that is like, Oh, he was a little bit of a slow guy. Like, uh, I'm like, slow can mover? I put my rewards number in there? And he's like, are you from Auburn? <laughs> yeah. Mark was telling me this. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he was a little yeah. bit of a I was slow right, I was right on the edge of doing the planes, trains, and automobiles yeah. automobile scene where he's like, I'd like a car. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like it right now. Yeah. Uh, I'll be, I was I'm close. impressed. I'm impressed. Well, that, well, that's why they put that guy in the night shift. Yeah, we didn't probably. lose our cool once. Yeah, for sure. That guy is not allowed to work the morning shift. I'm Here's sure. what we're trying to tell you. At Stokes Auction Group, we, we find a way. the job done. That's we right. We find a way. There is no, we you can't it. make it. You did it. But what I will say is that I was highly disappointed that I wasn't able to go to my show. Me too. Because like that is a room where it really feels like a grassroots community, yeah. like Agreed. coming together. Like I actually missed two shows this weekend, which makes it even harder for, to talk about, but both organizations that are I wasn't able to yet? be with. Are no, you, I'm not. Are you crying? But Inside one thing crying. that I have to say is like, that is an organization that has scaled up to raise a huge sum of money and it still has like the grassroots feel. It does. And that's really hard for organizations to do. Especially the big ones. Especially the big ones. I can't tell you how many ballrooms, and this isn't to pump us up or anything, but we go to these rooms where they're raising like a lot of money and it feels so stilted and fake at times. And disappointing. Well, just very plastic. Yeah, it's Almost disappointing like for me. But I'm the, I'm the feel good person yeah. there. And so, um, one thing that I love about what happened that night was, and I'd like to encourage uh, people that are planning an event to to kind of think about this angle. The children, there was a shift. Mm -hmm. So the children got their hair all done and they were dressed in beautiful dresses and they were a part of the event. So it wasn't a night out for the parents as much as it was a, uh, we're here because of them like that. and they're a part of it. 
and let's make them a part of the fundraising even. Yeah. And they're all dolled up. And at the end of the night, while we're waiting on numbers, they had a line in the back of the room of tables that had cheddar corn, caramel corn, oh, cool. hot dogs. And it wasn't just the kids that were eating it. Heck no. People were Listen, like, Bleh. plus the bars were there. Don't sleep on a good hot dog. Don't I sleep have to on a say, good hot do dog. not sleep on a good hot dog. So I think you and I are getting at the same thing in that the way that these markets that we were in last weekend were able to develop their community yeah. really makes it a sustainable model. It does. Like I can't tell you how many times we go to these big ballrooms, it feels stilted and it falls apart. Yeah. But if they're building sustainable models, essentially what they're doing is they're investing in like the families to make it a fun place for the family to be. Agreed. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna instill the next generation to give, right? Mm -hmm. If they remember, hey, when I was 12 years old, I came here and danced. Yep. And I made friends with Billy and Billy and I eventually work in the same space, et cetera, et cetera. That's where those connects to the community and the nonprofits. And these people are all in the same state, but yes. in different cities. So it also is creating, it's, it's genius, it, it really. Is. They are creating this particular group and this particular group and this particular group are all relying on each other miles apart mm -hmm. to get to the same goal yeah and so you're you're crossing over and you're you know you're it's just so it's great it's really really, it's really smart great. and it's unparalleled yeah and, and the thing is i don't like, see it. there's nowhere else is doing no it. you don't else right is doing it. and you see like like i said these bigger these bigger organizations get bigger and bigger and bigger and what i've always appreciated about this market that we're talking about is it's so grassroots focused that they give away like a grocery card Yes, at, at, for at a year. Raffle across like all the different fundraisers. Now, for some of these events, they'd go, "Oh, I don't need a grocery card. Oh no, I'd never be caught dead using right. a grocery card." Like you, you could feel pitching that idea in some rooms mm -hmm. and them putting their nose up at it, and they're just so grassroots and down to earth that it makes it a very fun customer to partner with. It does. So, what's the thousand foot view? We've had a weekend where we are back in a community that continues to reinvent itself year over year, and they do it by diving and leaning into the families of the organization, but also the local businesses. Local businesses. Because I found myself not being there, and I guess, and I kept sitting back and being like, why am I so upset that I'm not at this show? Because like, it's unique. Like, why is that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've missed shows before and didn't mm -hmm. think twice about it, but this was different. And I think something that really crossed my mind was that the items that they selected for these events were so community-based mm -hmm. that it doesn't necessarily the big five-star item. And what I'm saying is like when you go to throw a fundraising event, it's very easy to be, to be like, what is the biggest, best item that we can get? And right. then all of a sudden you have tickets to like the Masters or the NBA or something like completely over the top, which is great. You look at the lineup that I had, I don't know about your lineup, but the lineup that I had was all community-based. Oh, it was a local bar that had put together a, a mm -hmm. wine and spirits package. It was golf at one of the local golf courses. It wasn't like these huge items that the only way we, the only way we can raise money is finding something super unique. It was all community-based and people continued to give, like cross-pollinating all the local establishments. But I will also say those lives were not huge numbers. Those live, those live items, right? The, the, and and so you had a, you know, they knew why they were there. So the money that they raised to go to the mission or the need, um, was strongly supported, and the items were supported. Yeah. But the mission and the idea and the goal was strongly, strongly supported, and and it was very interesting because. I had a unique night in that it was so awesome for me and my poor husband, I kind of left him hanging a little bit, but it was one of those rare opportunities. I had these little girls, four of them, and then, then a fifth that would hear me hipping and moving and, and they were just, their eyes got this big and they started hipping every time I hit. Uh, so they were youth ambassadors? They were just kids. They were just kids. They, they were, were well, one of them was, you know, not, not, uh, no ambassador. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah one they of were them ambassadors was, of the mission. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, one of them was the main speaker that night. Gotcha. Yeah. And so all of her little friends. And so I thought, I am bringing these girls up with me. What does it hurt? What uh, you does just it abandon hurt? your team like that? No. How dare you? No. 
They were How part of the team. Dare. So I just looked at my husband and I said, Sorry, bus buddy. We're going. We're you out. Know, we're going. <laughs> and so they came with me and they were ringing with yeah. me See, and loved it. Those are the moments. Those, those are, the moments. are the moments. You know, I heard Mark say it, so I'm going to steal it from him earlier this week, but he said, we had the magic in the room. We did have the magic in the room. And that was room. probably part of it. That, that was the part of that it. That was probably, That yeah. was the part of it. People were together to make sure that the lives of young people are protected. Yeah. And that there has there's longevity there. Yeah, but I mean, like, I know, so I know that we just did auction school last week, so we'll probably get some viewers coming in from auction school. But essentially, like, if you are, like, in a situation where you just came out of an auction college, think about the way that these communities can be tapped where you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Because these are we're not doing anything that's 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 rocket science here. We're not doing brain surgery like we're getting people in the room and allowing these moments to be facilitated. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked you a question a few weeks ago. What is it that Stokes Auction Group does? What is the problem that we're what solving? What is the problem that we're solving? And I think that's it. Like it it's the magic that's made in the ballroom. And, and the way that you tap into that is leaning into community and allowing them to be a part of something bigger. And that's what this is. But the, the one thing that you've just started that they already have is their North Star is solid. They all have the same North Star. Mm -hmm. They all know the goal. They all know the mission. They all know the need. And they, they embrace it. And they work towards it. And they know that what they do that night isn't going to achieve it, but they're still focused on that star. And because they're focused on that star, they realize that they just took one more step. Yeah. And they're not stopping. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, I, I can't believe that it's been able to sustain for as long as it has. And I think it's been like four or five years now. Yeah, I, I, like. I want to say it was pre-pandemic. I, th I think this was born out of the pandemic a little bit. I think it was before the pandemic. We'll have to do the research. We'll have to do some research. Long story short, like it's cool to see that it's continuing to move forward. And I just am really blown away that we're working with a national brand, yet they're able to bring it to a local level. And mm -hmm. so often when you see these national brands try to go to the satellites, they're trying to paint with the same brush they've painted with in every territory. And that was not the case on this weekend No, at, at, in any of the rooms. In any of the rooms. I yeah. mean, for goodness sakes, one of our guys sold a tie. So, yeah. so that tells yeah. you the energy that's so, happening. We don't know. We don't know how that we, went. We don't even we know don't how know it happened. How All I know is that but I heard from my gal. We're waiting tie. on those numbers, but they're selling a tie yeah. right now, and we're like, okay, so yeah. they're having the same thing happening there mm -hmm. that we're having happening here. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Somebody that loved an orange tie, man. They're like, sell my tie. Yeah. Okay, let's For sell sure. the tie. That you definitely know, was so. a joke about someone's ugly orange tie. Yeah. That turned into something, you know. Yeah. But, Anyway, so, so we, won't, we won't talk much about the weekend. Think about audience development and think about the local community and get people in, the, in your community that want to lift up others and you're going to go far. And your goal is not dollars that night. Your goal is sustainability over time. Yeah. If you can make an impact over the course of five years holding events, you're much better off than having one big event where Agreed. you burn out all your donors. Agreed. And this continues to prove the fact that the ongoing donation is really beneficial for all. I just looked up a book that I want to read, um, Uncharitable. Yeah, you were talking about gonna, this. And I'm going to take a peek at that and see if what's it. But what it talks read about. Read along, Pod. Read along, Pod. Oh. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. We should do that. That would Buy be three so copies. Fun. We'll read a chapter a month. Oh, my God. Book oh, club, book club, book, book club, book club. Book yeah. club. Okay. Um, I do love book club. Anyway, we don't do it anymore. Do so <laughs> we'll have to do that again. But where my point is, is it speaks to, in the, you know, the, the little synopsis about what the book is about, it okay. speaks to donors and what they get caught up in. Yes. Which hampers them donating. So we have to always remember as auctioneers, as event planners, as EDs, as yeah. all of the facets of the charity world, our donor is also dealing with a lot of things. Right. And so we have to, you know, almost help facilitate, help facilitate their ability to do that. So a lot to be said for donors and, and, and what we can do to encourage them to become lifelong donors. I really think that's what it's about, for sure. 
<coughs> and um, yeah, so I'm excited to read that. One thing that I will say before we jump off here is that we are starting to plan an event. It will be happening in June. June 24th. We are very excited about it, but we are going to go through the planning process. And I think we should just like let them know exactly what it looks like for us to go through the process. Would you like us to talk about our first step? I think so. I mean, so we are holding a golf fundraising event it's and it's going to take place in June. June so 24th. We are in February. February. That's mm -hmm. right. We're still in February and we've already honed in on the course and we're planning on signing paperwork in the yep. next week. Got the contract so, done. In terms of you shopping, you shop shopping in terms of like vetting a few courses, mm -hmm. you had stipulations that you wanted in a certain location. So that narrowed it down. And then how did you get from like the three in consideration down to the one that we ended up going with? I think it speaks to what you personally want to deal with. And, um, I am not inclined right now to deal with big corporate groups yeah. um, only because we do, we are a small company. And so we would prefer to have, we want to talk to somebody. We want to be able to say, Hey, you know, John, what do you think about this? Let me talk you through it. And you talk me through it. And then let's see if we can come up with a contract. So we talked through it. Boom. He sent us a contract and son-in-law looked over it and said, looks great. This can't be, you know, and I'm like, no, this guy's just laid back and that. And, and so it had the good feel yeah. for me. So, so for us, it's like big on relationship building. And I think this is true for a lot of people in the events industry, mm -hmm. like people partner with people they know. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's exactly what happened there. Cause I think you reached out to a couple of other people and you didn't get the warm and fuzzy. Well, I didn't get the warm and fuzzy because where we used to have it pre pandemic, where we used to have it is now strictly corporate. So you can't even talk to anybody there. You have to, do it all through yeah. Oki, yeah. you know, and that just didn't interest me. Not that Oki isn't a good organization. Yeah, that I mean, is not at all what I'm things, saying. They do right. very good things. However, for the type of event that we're planning, it's a memorial tournament. So it's a time for us, as weird as this might sound, to celebrate and remember and be sad and happy, but to really not forget those people that mean so much to us that we've lost within the business. Yeah. And, and we have lots of facets in the business, car, charity, But I think what you're speaking to is you're speaking to the fact that like you want somebody that actually cares about what you're doing, right? Yes, like, like, cares about talking to you kind of talked me. about like, okay, this is the person we went with, this way we didn't go with this other person. It's because it means a lot to us. But essentially what you're saying is like, you have a mission and a vision that you want to see held up. And if that's not going to be reciprocated or even if it's going to fall in deaf ears, it's not going to work out. And one thing I didn't do is shop the cheapest smart because yeah. for me, money wasn't, that isn't my first line. Money is not an issue. Money is an issue. It's a huge <laughs> issue. I can't even get a TV hey, box that, that, for 10 bucks without hey, getting in trouble. Hey, well, so we'll, we'll anyway, see how that evolves. Um, yeah, I'm getting but, the box. Well, um, but, but one thing I do want to say <laughs> is like, so now that we've established the course, we've basically committed to it. Mm -hmm. We know that we're going to have about mm -hmm, people participating mm -hmm. and we need to break down the price per player is our right. next step. Yep. Right. So in the next like 14 days, We'd like to have a number for a person to buy in at. And then the way that we're going to stack those is we're going to say, Hey, we're going to make a little bit money on each person. Hopefully each player would might be not goal. be able to though. That might cover our cost. And then I will get sponsorships. This is where your sponsorships come in. If you right. can cover the cost of your event, um, like your ticket price covers your meal. And maybe you break out the rental of the facility, you know, and just take a percentage of that that you want to recover 50% of that. And, but you break down, you take the full number of the meal, the golf, mm -hmm. the cart. I mean, it's all should be included, right? But anything that it's going to cost you and you divide it by the 144. Right. And you divide it by the number of golfers and then, mm -hmm. then we'll have our entrance fee. And then we'll have our entrance and fee. And then from there, we're going to build sponsorships, probably yep. three or four different tiers. Yep. And you know, our goal, just because we're a nonprofit doesn't mean we're not going for profit. We are. Mm -hmm. And that profit will eventually go into a fund, which helps support those in our community. Right. And we give those as grants. Um, so essentially like it's exciting times. We're going to help walk you through the process of planning an event, but it starts with those kind of numbers. Where do you want to be? 
what time of year. Landing on the date was a little bit, took some back and forth. That took some back and forth. We you wanted know, to keep it in June and we wanted it to be on a Monday. And we wanted to avoid, we wanted to take into consideration the school schedule because mm -hmm. we have teachers, individuals, your that wife, are teachers, my daughter. Yeah, that are in the school system. So all those things are coming to pass. We're excited about it. It's going to take a group effort of a lot of those in the auction community. And um, I'm excited to have you at the helm of it. You're Thank doing you. great. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to, I'm a, not nervous about it at all. Um, sure. But I am. I'm excited because there's, that's another thing to remember when you're planning an event. If you have excitement in your community that are saying, when's your event? When are, are you doing another event? Are you doing this? That means that you probably did something that was palatable and fun for them before. Mm -hmm. So that's something to keep in mind. Make your event fun, make it memorable, make it unique, however you have yeah. to do it. Like those three that we just did this weekend so that people are like, Oh, oh God, I hope they do it again. It. Are they doing it again? Yeah. Are you doing it again? And this is actually backed by popular demand. That's, Super some, that's much. something that I just say as a filler from time to time, but that's this is something that's coming back because of requests of our group. And um, it kind of went away. Turns out there was a pandemic that happened, which <laughs> kind of derailed our uh, cadence with everything, mm -hmm. but we are excited to come back to it. So we'll give you more information as that continues to come to pass. Uh, yeah, we got about three plus months until that happens. Yeah, uh, and and I think to be honest with you, I think the hardest part is almost done. Get the contract signed, and then the food thing. We'll sit down and talk about that. Always the optimist. The hardest part's never done. The hardest part is done. The, the rest of it's done. easy. The rest of it, you just got to tell people you want. I'm the asker. I'll just walk in and say, Listen, "Hey, what are you doing on June 24th?" This is what I need. I need a grand. No. What am I going to get for it? Oh you my goodness, love. You're gonna, you're gonna feel. She love. talks big. She talks it's the bulldog. True. She's the. It's she's true. talks like a bulldog. I mean, I'm pretty I good at getting the you, money. I, yes, you are. Yes, you are. I mean, uh, you are. You are. And um, we know that you're pretty good at getting the money because you're either an auctioneer or a fundraising professional. And I thank you for being with us this week and every week. So go get the money. So go get the money. Go do good. Thank you for joining us this week. My name is Shelby. This is Kelly. Yes, and hey. Keep your heart right and your vision clear. And everything else will fall into place. And go do good. Yeah, go do good. All right. See you later, guys. Bye. Ciao.